see. Someone's asking, how would you recommend a new aftermarket creator launch a new performance product considering the established brands are quickly replicating innovation of others? Are patents required? So this is like our our future competitor is asking how to <laughs> to to compete with us. No, I mean, um, basically the only way that you can do it is you have to enter the market through through a small niche opening where you can offer a product or service that nobody else is offering, or you can offer it in a new way. Yeah, some better that adds value that would make the customers in the marketplace notice you and give you their money. Um, Patents are, are very tough. Uh, they're, they're reasonably expensive to get. Uh, utility patents are much harder to get because you actually have to uh, prove that you have a new use case. Yeah, in, that's the, never in these been cases done. Where, where so much of the stuff on the vehicle has been, you know, developed and revised ad nauseum for, you know, suspension components, mm -hmm. engine components, getting a, getting a, a functional patent like that is going to be very difficult. Yeah, and then you have ornamental or design patents like what uh, INA Industries had done with their uh, rear oil seal, which they accused us of copying, but um, they did have a, a an ornamental patent. Ours, our part happens to not resemble theirs in any way that would violate their patents. So as a result, there's been no legal action because there can't be. Uh, so they're, they're not very useful. Uh, where an ornamental patent could be useful is when you have a part that's in a captured space and it can only look that way. And then it's some very small changes are all that's required. So, and then let's say you, you have a really good patent and now you have to enforce it. So do you want to spend money suing somebody? It's, it's a hard battle and proving that they violated your patent. So, um, and I mean, we've been, we've been knocked off countless times and, and you very, will be, there's very little we can, the do. more successful you are, the more you'll be knocked off and copied. But we try and provide, you know, the best service, the best availability, the most coverage, you know, and of course yeah. all the other. So you're, 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 you you're going to have to find, um, a, a way to offer a product that, that people want and, and find the opportunity between, you know, because the market is pretty locked up. Uh, you probably don't want to come to market with, you know, something that there's already 20 of on the market. But, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I see new guys pop up and, and it's typically through one product, which is what, what I did. You know, we, we, we offered a, a standalone ECU that was compatible with five cylinders. Nobody really had that. We made it cheap and accessible for any, any DIY, um, to, to purchase and install. And then we created a, a line of products around that application that allowed customers to, you know, either install it more easily or gain more performance and enjoyment from the package. Um, and, and nobody was doing that, you know, um, at the time there was APR, which wasn't doing anything for I-5. I think the only I-5 competitor in the U.S. was to Bennett at the time. Um, there was intended acceleration, which, there was, IAA, there was, which, uh, which was just tap, huh? Yeah. Intended acceleration. Yeah. Um, there was they, they were just selling a, a Zener diode mod for five, Audi 5000s and they still do. I think they had a chipset too, uh, eventually, you know, later down yeah. with the AAN with a, oh, there C4 was, S4 they did, they did, stuff. but it was probably just that the MTM chip was just getting knocked off. Of that that yeah. Um, so anyways, yeah, but, but we offered a product that wasn't on the market and, and that's how we started. So, uh, have fun. Um, it's a lot of hours and you know, yeah. sleepless nights. Yeah. And I, and the, mostly I see people trying to do whoever asked this, they, they, they come in, they try, they fail, they move on. I mean, I, I see so many companies, you know, yeah. efforts come and go, sure. come and, go. and it's very hard to scale. Um, that's the hard part. It, yeah. it is difficult to keep it going. You can come in, you know, with, with, and we're not trying to discourage everybody, but, yeah. um, you know, it's hard. It's, it's, it's really difficult to scale and, and, and you have to be able to, to overcome a lot of, um, really difficult challenges, a lot of stress. Um, and then, uh, the more successful you are, the more people hate you, which is what happened to me. I used That's to be, fun, yeah. I used to be kind of the. I don't know. I was, I was an influencer in the Audi five cylinder community before there were influencers. And, and I started zero three, four EFI and everybody was rooting for me. And then I changed the name to zero three, four motorsport and we started growing and we really started becoming successful. And then all of a sudden, 
um, people started hating us. It was yeah, like bizarre, was, you know. A weird switch. To get yeah, to and all, all of a sudden, sudden it's like, you're, oh, you're the big corporation yeah, in our yeah, industry. It's like four of us in the garage. You know? uh, yeah. Like, so whatever, you just move on, and we started doing B five stuff and one AT stuff, and and they loved us for a while, and then you know you just you just keep moving forward. So now we have this great uh, group of B nine. Um, yep, B8 and B9 guys. B8, B9 customers having fun with their cars. And we still do a ton of I5 stuff yep. regardless. And and 1AT stuff and 270. So. All right. Um, I guess the other option is you can go sell insurance with your brother-in-law, Rick. And, um, you know, not, not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's just not as fun as tuning cars. <laughs> but it's probably more lucrative and much less stressful. 